Yeah? First, the Stivaletto brothers came in wearing suits with ties. Well, sort of suits. Sort of ties. Yeah, they're charging you with battery. Sheriff. Sure. Just bringing everybody up to speed on the Fiddle investigation. Great. Feel free to jump in. Now, the force required to pierce our victim's skull in two places with a dull railroad spike, which is not easy, means the killer is almost certainly male, and a strong male at that. The angle of penetration suggests a man over six feet tall. And these beautifully unmolested tire tracks were found near the crime scene. It's like something out of Pompeii, aren't they? I sent a cast to the lab. You'll be hearing on that soon. This is exciting stuff. I mean, a hurricane leaves a trail of evidence in its wake a lot less than this bastard did. You know, I've been doing this for 21 years, and I always get a slight tingling in my tongue whenever I'm certain that I'm going to catch a guy. This has been crackling like an electrode ever since I got here. Put Braven in cell three. Sheriff. Track of a BF Goodrich all-terrain radio mounted on a half-ton pickup. LT-303 slash 55R-20. Three-ply polyester casing, two full-width steel belts. Good tire, not stock. OK. What do you see? Uh, in addition to what you just said? Run your hand along the surface this way. Smooth, right? Yeah. In the other direction? Rough. We call that directional wear pattern, and it's as unique as a fingerprint world. Great. The bastard may as well have left his passport, driver's license, and high school photo at the scene. We pull the files on all the tire sales in the area, cross-reference that with registered trucks. This time tomorrow, we're investigating vehicles. Boy, it sure is a pleasure working with the state police on this. <laughs> Appreciate it, Dan. You know, I think I'll check out your Thawfest. Get me a funnel cake. <laughs> 